Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. I'm out here in Gillis Plains, just looking at a property for a client. They, um, it's an investment property of theirs. They actually live overseas, and they've asked me to come and check it out. They've got a tenant in here at the moment, and they're having a few ish, structural issues with the house, and they've spent a bit of money on, on time trying to trying to fix it up, trying to cover over some of the problems, but they've had quite severe cracking, and we just went and had a look inside the house. The tenant's, um, the current tenant's only been there for 18 months or so, so relatively new. When they moved in, everything was all painted and cleaned up and everything was all perfect. And in the last 18 months, everything started to fall apart. So that tells me there is definitely a structural issue along the way. Um, I've gone in and had a bit of a look. The, the interesting thing is it's it's happening throughout the whole house. So in particular, the kitchen, the roof is starting to severely crack and fall in in the middle of the kitchen. Um, but even if you start looking at doors, uh, door frames, some of the doors don't close. And not just going into the living and kitchen area but also into some of the bedrooms you know some of the cupboards in the bedrooms are you know not straight and flat some of the floors not looking straight and flat I did get up into the ceiling um, into the roof cavity trying to work out whether I can see anything that's not lined up there unfortunately it's right up the other end of the house so I couldn't really see anything particular my guess it's probably something to do with the floor it's actually a a timber floor, so it's sitting on some some floor joists and on on top of some uh, uh, on top of some some posts which are holding the whole floor up. So essentially, what that means is, you know, some of those have probably moved over time. The issue we're going to have to look at is, is it really worth fixing it? So I'm going to go away, do a bit of research, have a look at the costs associated with you know renovating the property, or do we just try and patch it up? And with the understanding, you know, it's only been 18 months since it got last patched up, so. You know, every 18 months, we just come and patch it up again and just try and deal with this movement for, for X amount of period. Unfortunately, that's just going to be a short-term fix. It's not going to fix it up over time. So long-term, you know, what are our options? Do we do we spend the money and rip up the flooring and, and replace all the, um, all, the, all the structural support of the house? Or do we look at other options by you know, maybe knocking the house down and subdividing, potentially subdividing? We started looking at the options to subdivide, you know, it does fit in less than the minimum block size as far as to be able to subdivide into two. Saying that, you know, I have subdivided a house around the corner here and I've, you know, it was quite a bit, to be honest, less than the minimum block size and we subdivided into two, managed to fit a, you know, three bedroom, two bathroom, single garage house on each. So, you know, that client there, I'm currently building two houses for him. He had a similar situation, an old house that probably wasn't worth renovating. So now he's, you know, going to get two brand new homes with really good rental return, with really good, you know, Benefits as far as, you know, depreciation benefits and, you know, low maintenance costs and, and you know, warranty on the house and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to sit back, have another chat to the council, see what options are as far as development potential. Maybe have to call a few um, trading mates to get them out here to have a look at what the cost would be associated with renovating it. But, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I, I think probably, you know, from my developer hat on, I'm, you're always going to get a lot of benefits from, from developing a property as far as, you know, subdividing to two gives you options as far as selling the land off or or building one house or building two houses and it's a long-term investment it's going to work out a lot better hey jace thanks for joining hey i should have got jace to come in jace is a bit of a building expert and he owns his own building company so should have came out and checked out uh, my house for me it would have given me some good tips i'm sure um so yeah so basically that's the next stage is to have a look at our options put all the information together I'll come back to the client. You know, I prepare a report where I give them all their options so they can really make a clear decision on what the next step's going to be. You know, it's probably going to be 200, you know, two, 300 pages worth of information just to make sure they're fully informed of their options. But that's what it's all about, essentially. If you're going to get out there and, um, you know, spend potentially tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, to, you really want to make sure you're well informed before you start spending that money. So even just to lodge an application to subdivide, you know, that's $1,300, let alone the cost of the surveyor's costs and plus the actual subdivision cost itself. So you're spending some serious cash. So you want to make sure you do that with all the information to make an informed decision. So, hey, Mike, thanks for joining me. And Asley, thanks for joining me too. If you've got any, um, if you like what I had to say, click on the like button. If you haven't liked it, still click on the like button because I really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions or you're experiencing crashing issues, you know, put a comment in the comment box. I'd love to hear about um, your thoughts and what you think about the whole process. And um, yeah, if you um, want me to talk about something else in the future or you're having particular issues, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to give you some advice and tell you the, the, the options you've got going forward. And uh, also let you know, I interviewed Mike T today for my podcast. So if you want to find out about the best way to try and sell a house, then I'm sure you'll be interested to hear what Mike T had to say. He's uh, 
he's a real estate agent out at the Gong in Wollongong. So if you're out that way, I'm sure you'll find it interesting. And uh, thanks, guys, for joining me. I look forward to catching you again next time. Thanks.